Hi, everybody. Jennifer Schaus here. We're coming to you live today from Washington, D.C., and thanks for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. Uh, this year in 2023, we are covering the top 40 uh, government contractors at the federal level, and we are looking at some detailed information about them, contracting trends, uh, defense versus civilian versus independent agency work and uh, and some other information that might be useful to you. So thanks for joining us and let's go, go ahead and get started. Uh, as you know, most of our, actually all of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. We've got over 600 on our YouTube channel. If you hop over to the link to follow our YouTube channel, it doesn't cost you anything, uh, but you'll be alerted uh, when this webinar is uploaded to YouTube as well as any other webinars uh, that are added to our channel. If you're looking for today's PowerPoint, it's also complimentary. You can find it on the slideshare.net site. You can log in there with your LinkedIn credentials. Uh, a little bit about us. We are based in downtown DC and provide professional services for established revenue generating government contractors. Uh, some of our services are listed here, including GSA schedule support, uh, as well as events uh, and conferences. You can find more about us on our website under the About Us section. In the event that your business is selling to federal government contractors, we have opportunities for uh, advertising. We're currently running a buy one, get one special uh, for the month of July. Uh, you can advertise in our newsletter, which reaches over 26,000 subscribers. We can post content for you on our LinkedIn, uh, and you can also sponsor uh, any of our webinars. Some upcoming events and specialty webinars uh, to keep an eye out for in August. We've got a two-part series that we're doing with the OSDEBU at the VA. Uh, we're going to be covering GSA schedules. These are both going to be on uh, Thursdays, consecutive Thursdays, August 17th and the 24th, both at 12 p.m. Eastern. There's no fee to attend. Uh, this is hosted via WebEx, again, through the VA OSDEBU. Uh, the links are also on our website under the events section. Uh, but keep in mind, these are virtual if this is a uh, or these are webinars uh, we are also uh, covering with our friends at the SVA subcontracting opportunities within the VA that's going to be on Tuesday August 29th that's an MS teams uh, meeting and the link you can get to through the uh, PowerPoint slides or again through our website under the event section keep in mind again this is really not an uh, in-person event it is a webinar uh, on Thursday, October 19th, a uh, two-hour class on GSA schedules uh, with our friends at GovSpend and FedMine. Uh, we are covering requirements and strategies for success. There's a registration link that will be hosted through Zoom. So a lot of classes coming up. Some of are well out into the future, including this one covering marketing. 101 for federal contractors, which uh, will take place actually next month on August 23rd, and then a repeat of the class again on February 15th. This is through the Virginia PTAC, uh, which is now being rebranded as uh, Apex Accelerators. These are all complimentary, um, and simply just click on the link to register. These are also uh, on our website under the events section. Uh, in two months' time, we will cover uh, another class on GSA schedules. Uh, that's going to be Thursday, September 14th. It's a two-hour class, again, through the Virginia PTAC, and the link is also on our website. Uh, clock is well into kind of past ticking, I'll say, on the GSA Oasis Plus. We do have support packages available. So uh, if you're interested in that, um, time is uh, of the essence here. You can shoot us an email to the hello at jenniferschaus.com uh, and we can provide you with support. Okay, the reason our webinars are complimentary is because we've got some great sponsors. And then we just wanna go ahead and thank them. So we wanna thank our friends at GovEvents. They're the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on govevents.com as well as our recordings from our past 600 plus webinars. We also wanna thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They are the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8 aid firms. Visit Set Aside Alert for more information. The Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we wanna thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. 
Okay, the Virginia PTAC, as we mentioned, where we're teaching classes on marketing as well as GSA schedules. The Virginia PTAC at George Mason University offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live training, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. One-on-one -on -one counseling is however limited to eligible client companies. The Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce monthly government contracting council meeting is available for networking, uh, networking with your peers, learning about upcoming events and opportunities, and to help shape future programming. The meetings take place the fourth Tuesday of each month at 8.30 a.m. at the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce. The next meeting will be on Tuesday, August 22nd. If you have questions, please contact, <coughs> excuse me, Alicia Field at the Reston Chamber. Her email address is listed there at the bottom of your screen. The Federal Business Council events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report they attend more than one event each year. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes uh, agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, tech expos, and off-site meetings. FBC provides full lifecycle meeting planning and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience, systems, and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Bitspeed, uh, bear with me here. Bitspeed, do you want help winning government contracts? Bitspeed helps and you win. Find opportunities from every federal, state, local, and public source in the U.S. Bitspeed can help you find teaming partners, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, and can also help you win with a compliance matrix and proposal templates. Bitspeed is an official partner of the SBA 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started, get started today at bitspeed.com. Okay, the uh, GovSpend and FedMine uh, platform is the uh, premier platform for finding federal government contra contracting opportunities. They're the leading source of data analytics and insight for government contractors. They integrate data from 18 federal data sources and sets and create a single database that places the key data points at your fingertips. The platform now provides contract opportunities within thousands of entities at the federal, state, local, and education organizations. With the acquisition of FedMine in 2021, the combined platform now empowers teams to make smarter decisions. And we want to thank GovSpan and FedMine for providing the data in our webinar series this year and in previous years. Okay, uh, a little bit about the series and our uh, webinar schedule. Again, all webinars um, are complimentary and recorded. You can find the recordings on our website as well as our YouTube channel. If you click over on that YouTube link and follow our channel, um, leave comments on any of the webinars that you like or give us a, a like, we certainly appreciate it. Uh, and then the slide share link will get you to the PowerPoint. You can log in there with your LinkedIn um, credentials. Okay, everything in red is what we've covered. You can find all of those recordings again on our website. Uh, under the top 40 section. You can also find them on our YouTube channel. Here's where we are. Um, a little bit more than, obviously than halfway through the series. Uh, we're covering Bechtel today, Jacobs next week, SpaceX, and then we'll uh, conclude the series Wednesday, November 15th with GlaxoSmithKline. Okay, uh, we're assuming that most people are on the uh, on the webinar because they are interested in subcontracting with these larger businesses. So uh, with that in mind, we just want to bring your attention to two webinars that we've done in the past on subcontracting uh, as it relates to the FAR and the DFAR. So um, you certainly want to be cognizant and aware of FAR Part 44, which is subcontracting policies and procedures that gets you to the YouTube link, uh, which will inform you about any of the FAR flow down clauses that apply to subcontractors. Uh, same thing there with the DFARS. Uh, you're going to have 
flow down clauses that will apply to you uh, when you are subcontracting to these large businesses. Uh, you certainly want to be aware of them before you sign on any dotted lines uh, or work with your government contracts attorney uh, to educate yourself. Okay, some other complimentary webinars on subcontracting that we've done. We actually kicked off the series uh, in the beginning of February with subcontracting with the primes. It had six different sessions, uh, ranging from market research all the way through to post-award compliance. Uh, we encourage you to take a look at those. Uh, in 2022, we covered some contracting with all of the 15 federal departments. So you can look at those, uh, segment those out by the department that you are perhaps targeting. And then uh, we've got some strategies for subcontracting uh, listed there as well. And those have been covered over the last, I'm gonna say uh, 10 plus years. And those are more tactical and strategic topics on subcontracting. Uh, a little bit about some best practices and then we'll dig into back now. Uh, if you are subcontracting, you certainly want to define what it is uh, you do and do it well. Uh, present that to the prime contractor as, uh, as this is basically what you're bringing to the table. Um, and once you have identified what it is that, um, what your specialty is, uh, you then want to identify an opportunity where you can work together with this prime. Do not ask them to do your homework for you. You should be doing that homework by looking at sam.gov or using any of the data aggregators that are out there. So what is it that you are bringing to the table? Again, this could be your uh, superior capability that you have, a relationship within the agency, a, a lower price, or anything listed there on the screen. Once you have identified these primes, again, using all of the databases that are out there or any of the paid aggregators, you want to find as much information as you can about not only the uh, prime contractor to make sure that that is a company that you want to work with. So, you know, what is their work environment like? What are their policies like? Are they strict? Are they easygoing? Uh, are they very organized? Are they not? Um, you know, do they have a, a history of working with the same subcontractors over and over? A lot of these things you can find through looking at data. Um, so once you have identified them, uh, make sure that you are digging further into these uh, databases, again, public and or paid, to find as much information about them as possible. This also includes Google News, Google Alerts, spending some time on their website, registering for their newsletter, find out what events they're participating in, what associations are they um, members of, and get to know them that way. Your capability statement, uh, which they will certainly ask for, uh, should be customized for the specific opportunity as well as for the company. So make sure that it's going to resonate with them, that it will highlight the area of expertise that you're bringing to the opportunity. Uh, once you have all of this in place and you've done the homework and you realize that, yes, you do want to work with this company, then you can hop over to their website, register as a small business vendor. Most will have a pretty clear um, area on their website where you can do this. After you've done all of that and have decided that um, that your kind of information is complete and updated on their website, that's when you can then start reaching out on LinkedIn to the small business liaison officer. Those are kind of your your gatekeepers to get you into the program managers. But do not ask them again. I repeat, do not ask them to do your homework for you. You should be bringing the opportunity to them. Okay, so today we're gonna to be covering Bechtel. Uh, they are obviously a well-known company. Uh, here's some basic information on them. You've got the link to their website. Uh, they've got a pretty well-organized website. They're privately held, not publicly traded, so we don't have any stock price for them. Uh, their small business uh, registration, uh, they've got actually a really nice site um, for suppliers to register there uh, and lots of good information on projects that they're working on. Uh, a lot of these large businesses, as, uh, as you well know, have many subsidiaries uh, and companies, uh, DBAs. So uh, we wanted to provide the uh, UEI here for the company. And so we're gonna take the, um, uh, the parent UEI here for Bechtel. And obviously they've got a lot of um, companies. A lot of them, as you can see, are focused on, are designed uh, based on what the type of work that they're doing. Um, they've got some joint ventures listed there, Bechtel Jacobs, Bechtel SAIC, um, 
et cetera. So uh, we encourage you to dig in a little bit deeper, but we are going to be looking here at the parent uh, corporation, again, private company, headquartered in Reston, Virginia, founded in um, the late 1800s in California. Uh, Brendan Bechtel is the chairman and CEO. Uh, you can see he's got a long history with the company. He's got the right name. Um, however, it looks like uh, Craig Albert is probably the one who's uh, running more of the operations and, uh, and really driving the train here. So uh, he also has a long history of being with the company. And prior to that, uh, as you can see, he was with uh, Western Health. Here are your uh, advocates for small business uh, as well as uh, supplier diversity. Uh, and we encourage you to reach out to these folks only after you have identified the opportunity that you want to work uh, with Bechtel on. Do not ask these guys to do your homework for you because that's not what they are there for. Okay, so we're going to look at the civilian contracts, the defense contracts, and then the independent uh, agency contracts. So when we uh, look here at the uh, civilian agencies, we see they've got a, a decent amount of revenue, uh, which certainly peaked in um, fiscal year 2021 uh, at 821 million. Uh, we went back to 2019 just be, in case there were any anomalies due to COVID, uh, and perhaps there were here. Uh, it's hard to tell just based on uh, the work that they do in general. Uh, it looks like they're um, their sales at energy took a real nosedive in 2022, but it looks like they are um, uh, gaining some traction again in 2023 with still a couple months to go. Um, so I would say uh, keep an eye on what happens in 2023, and it should be interesting to see what happens in the, uh, the next fiscal year after that to see if they are able to rebound and get back to their 2021 levels or even um, 2020. Okay, on the defense side, uh, the dollars are a little bit more significant here. Uh, we're talking billions, not millions. Uh, most of the work there is obviously with the Navy, uh, where they peak in fiscal year 2022, uh, which makes a slight jump from the prior fiscal year. Um, there was a dip, obviously, in 2020 for the Navy work. And again, I would encourage you to dig a little further into that. We see some uh, some peaks and valleys there for the Army as well. Um, some increases and then a decrease for 2023. But keep in mind, your DOD numbers are always delayed by three months. So we're really only seeing uh, about the first um, seven or eight months here for uh, DOD work uh, totals. Um, so there could be some ground uh, to make up there with the Army and Navy, but again, these are not um, clear pictures just because of the delayed reporting. If we look at the totals, um, though, we do see, um, uh, if you go just uh, right to left here, so fiscal year 2019 seemed to be a, a strong year. Uh, a little bit of a dip in 2020, and then making um, some uh, some good uh, gains there in 2021, thanks to, uh, it looks like obviously again, the good increase there at the Navy um, and still increasing for 2022. Uh, my guess is that 2023 totals will um, be positive there uh, unless there's uh, an, some sort of negative number that needs to be um, offset there for um, accounting purposes. So. Uh, DOD is, seems to be where it's at for Bechtel, um, but again, uh, civilian is not too, too far behind. They're still in the millions, not billions. Uh, we look at civilian, or I'm sorry, independent agencies. We've got NASA here showing up with um, some decent numbers uh, and primarily uh, the biggest um, revenue numbers are in 2019 and current uh, 2023. So apparently, um, I'm guessing they were perhaps affected by COVID because there was a big dip, obviously, for 2020, 2021, and 2022. Uh, but 2023 is looking good. So there, there seems to be decent uh, business there for Bechtel at NASA. Their top five NICS codes, uh, no surprise here. They are uh, primarily focused on industrial manufacturing, power, nuclear waste, um, uh, also, they do have uh, environmental um, and energy, um, alternative energy uh, business as well. 
So let's go ahead and look at the actual numbers here on the NAICS code. Uh, the big uh, driver of revenue is flowing through the 332410 for the uh, power boiler and heat exchanger manufacturing. Um, they've got decent numbers there with the uh, hazmat uh, waste treatment and disposal. Um, and uh, the rest there obviously speaks for itself. These are just the top five. There are more NAICS codes that they uh, play with, uh, but these are going to be the, the numbers that are bringing in uh, the most uh, revenue. And we went back to 2018 here, just so you can see um, kind of the, you know, where they started and, uh, and where things are currently. Keep in mind, these are cumulative numbers and are, uh, and do not reflect the last three months of DOD, again, because of the delayed reporting. Okay, so when we look at subcontracting, subcontracting dollars uh, are the threshold for subcontracting is contracts that are valued at $750,000 or above. When it comes to construction, however, and these folks do play in some construction NAICS codes, uh, that threshold is raised to a million, uh, but we still kept this at 750 because construction is not everything that they do. So you'll need to uh, dig into some of the details here. So. Uh, just like we saw in the previous slides on uh, civilian agencies, energy is kind of where it's at. Um, and then these obviously are the, the sector totals for their subcontracting dollars. And they follow the same pattern as what we saw in the earlier slides. Uh, on the defense side, again, keep in mind the delayed reporting, and these are following the same patterns with Navy uh, being the bulk of where the revenue is at. Um, for Bechtel as a whole, as well as the subcontracting opportunities. And then same thing there with Army. Okay, and on the independent side, again, NASA, uh, same thing. Um, so these numbers uh, simply mirror what we saw in the previous slide. If you're interested, say you've got some relationships at NASA or at other contracts that you feel could be growing where you need um, the strength of a company with a, a deeper bench, um, then I would dig into the contracts that they have to find out what exactly they're doing at NASA and is there any um, complement to what you are doing there. Okay, when we look at the actual subcontracts awarded um, by Bechtel, we've got the Navy and NASA. Again, NASA uh, kind of towering over Navy there and that was uh, the last fiscal year. Uh, and now when we look at by industry, we see those same uh, NAICS code, so construction and then the power boiler and um, heat exchange manufacturer. And this again is for fiscal year, uh, the last fiscal year. Okay, when we look at their actual subcontractors, um, some names here that you may or may not uh, recognize, pretty evenly spread with um, the wholesale electric supply company getting the bulk of the revenue, but you know, uh, second and third place seem to be uh, pretty close there between precision fab fabricating as well as uh, scientific lighting solutions. Um, and then the rest uh, are, you know, fairly close in numbers in revenue and some contracting dollars that they're receiving. Um, so no one's really running away with, uh, with anything, although the top three or four do have the bulk of the revenue. You can, however, uh, subcontract to these uh, subcontractors, though so there certainly are tier two, three, and four subcontracting opportunities. So um, I would also dig into the UEI numbers within SAM for these companies to find out uh, where this uh, work is happening. My guess would probably be uh, NASA and Navy, just as we saw on the um, on the previous slide. So you need to make some logical deductions, but also follow that up with some real live, uh, realistic uh, sleuthing on your part. Okay, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and look here at the subcontractor awards. These are dollar amounts, uh, low to high. These are the top five. Um, and so we've got some uh, descriptions there in that third column over. So everything from uh, weather instruments to meteorology services. Um, and again, uh, would encourage you to take a deeper dive into these companies, uh, the wholesale electric supply company, um, precision fabricating, scientific lighting, et cetera, et cetera, and figure out what exactly uh, the nature of the work is that they're doing. Um, and you can easily just take the um, 
the uh, the first column, the uh, the prime award uh, identifier identification number, and dig in a little bit deeper. When we uh, looked for GWAX, uh, and again, this data is coming to us from our friends over at GovSpend uh, FedMine. Um, so the government-wide acquisition contracts for Bechtel, we were not finding anything there. Um, and this was just a, a quick check, so uh, you may want to dig a little bit deeper into that. But um, uh, just to ensure that that is, in fact, uh, correct information. And expiring contracts, again, valued at 750 and above. These, again, uh, the 750 is simply because of the subcontracting uh, nature. So what's coming up to uh, expire here? Um, I always find it interesting to look at the number of transactions when you've got um, billions, trillions of dollars being divvied up either into 82 transactions or two. That's a big uh, difference. So some things are being um, sliced up pretty nicely. Others are not. Uh, again, I would take a look at the UEI number because Bechtel, uh, as we mentioned earlier, does have uh, subsidiary, uh, many subsidiaries that um, are going to have the different UEI numbers. Uh, but the contract numbers will give you more of the, the details uh, as far as the nature of the work and uh, when these are expiring. Some conclusions and just uh, some general information about the company. So as mentioned, they were a uh, company was founded in the late 1800s by Warren Bechtel. Uh, they built a railroad out west and then started working on some other projects, including the Hoover Dam, San Francisco Bay Bridge. The 1940s, they started uh, moving some of their work to the uh, Middle East and uh, have started to play more in the engineering uh, and project management for oil and gas, uh, as well as some of the other uh, industries listed there. Uh, they've got obviously critical infrastructure and defense related projects. Um, as you can see, the, the bulk of their work again was with DOD. Um, they are focused on sustainability, sustainability as well as uh, alternative energy and environmental uh, concerns. Um, they modernized dry docks at Pearl Harbor and Puget Sound. Um, and they've got obviously uh, a large presence on all seven continents uh, with thousands of projects. Um, so no small potatoes here. Uh, again, most of their work is defense related Navy, uh, but the civilian work, uh, although it's in the millions is not too far behind. Um, and a good chunk of that again is uh, Department of Energy. They've built over 150 nuclear plants, as you can see. Um, uh, what else can I tell you? They are currently headquartered in Reston, Virginia, although founded in San Francisco, California. Um, they're listed as the second largest construction company and uh, close to 20 billion. I'm sure that number is uh, over 20 billion at this point, This uh, that revenue figure, and that's total revenue, not just government contracts. Um, so it was obviously three, almost four years ago. So. Um, this is just a snapshot from their website for the small business uh, registration page, which I thought was laid out uh, very nice. Um, so you can click to find their current uh, opportunities to see if there's anything that your company can assist with. Um, they've got their small business uh, program and a lot of just nice links. It's easy to navigate, easy to understand what they're doing. Um, and then we gave you, I think, the two point of contacts that we were able to pull up on LinkedIn. There's probably plenty more, but those were the ones that were easy to find. Um, and then just some headlines here. Some of these are uh, a little bit older, uh, obviously going back to April and October of 2020 uh, on some news with them and AECOM. Um, and then something from about a year ago for um, the three billion dollar contract to manage nuclear waste. Uh, that's obviously down in Albuquerque. Um, Executive Biz, uh, this is a great uh, website to follow uh, on LinkedIn or just uh, in general on their website to find out who's kind of leading the, um, leading the show at uh, various companies. Uh, so that's the most recent um, post that we've got. So from about a week ago and then going back to August of 2022, um, their DOE uh, contract was halted by some bid protests. So um, looks like that may uh, still be on hold, but I'm not sure you'd have to dig in a little bit further. So these are just headlines to give you some, uh, some information to kind of get you started and energized or not uh, if you're interested in working with Bechtel. 
Um, that's all we've got for today. So the slides again will be posted on slideshare.net and the recording will make it to our YouTube channel later this afternoon. If you sign up for our YouTube channel, again, it doesn't cost you anything and just click on the link. Uh, you'll get a notification immediately when this gets uploaded. uploaded. Um, about an hour later, later you would get a, an email if you had not uh, signed up for the YouTube channel uh, with the link to the slides and the recording. So thanks for joining us and I uh, hope to see you next Wednesday.